everybody, welcome back to the Feature Crew. Today we are looking at DeepSeek R1, the model that's taken the world by storm, dropped the market 15% on tech stocks, all kinds of crazy reactions, allegedly a much more efficient model on par with O1. Let's see if that's true. Uh, so we're going to pair it directly with O1, run it through some uh, tests here and see, see where we land, see what we think. Let's dive in. We have uh, ChatGPT01 loaded up on the left and the new DeepSeek model on the right, and we will uh, make sure to turn on the R1 DeepThink mode. And we will send off these prompts. They're pretty much long prompts asking the models to generate a 3D planet. You can, we have a lot of features listed in the prompt asking for things like biomes and coloring and lighting. So we'll see how far they get through. You can see immediately DeepSeek is thinking more quickly at least. DeepSeek uh, was the first model to complete the challenge as expected since it's yeah. a smaller model that yep, can yep. inference more quickly. And so uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna see what it put together. So mm. it looks like we've got a problem. <laughs> it's a blank screen. Yeah, it's a blank screen. Oh, let's see if there are any errors. The read on orbit controls. This is an issue that we've seen before. It yeah. seems like there have been some changes in the library. So we'll check and see what O1 was able to do on a first shot. I, I want to note that I've only ever seen this three orbit controls error with an open AI model. It sort of lends credence to this idea that uh, DeepSeek was trained on a lot of open AI and synthetic data. Interesting. So we'll, yeah, let's take a look. We're back. I, I went ahead and because OpenAI was, uh, because O1 was taking its time thinking and providing a response, uh, we quickly tried to get rid of the orbit controls piece, the piece that was messing up on the DeepSeek thing, and I gave it very specific feedback as to what yep. was going on. Yep. It seems to have a very similar issue of create atmosphere, atmosphere is not defined. Problems. So it's really like starting to break down a little bit. Um, yeah. Let's see what let's see what O1. So just to prove to y'all, you can also check out our old videos. But yeah. we want to show what O1 was able to do with one, one shot. shot. And yeah. here's a planet. Yeah. Right. Ooh, so okay. O1 was quite a bit better out the box one shot. Right. The fact that O1 was able to build something straight away. Um, this is low key the best one yet. Yeah. Like just to call some things out, you're seeing biomes. You're seeing a semi cogent attempt at clouds. Yeah. Uh, you're seeing sort of interesting visual effects on the water. Uh, you're seeing an attempt at an atmosphere. Can you so... scroll? Like, does the zoom work? Oh, oh look at that. Yeah. Oh, wow. So you guys in and out sort of thing? Yeah. So, so this again, is... Incredible that we can now get to this point with these models that you can just give it this big, long prompt and it actually makes something kind of cool in just a single shot. Now, let's go back to DeepSeek. Let's see if we can kind of get out of the doors a bit. Let's see what DeepSeek actually tried to make. Um, it's just getting a bit stuck in the coding. I accidentally removed the atmosphere class and water. That's kind of what I thought it happened. Code. Yeah. There's a really interesting design question here, because like having that more human chain of thought outputted makes the model seem smarter than the actual results are being. Whoa. Whoa. Hey All now. Right. That's not bad. All right, things just changed, right? Yeah. I mean, the, it's a very spiky planet, but they didn't attempt as many features. No attempt at clouds, but mm. that's okay. I'd be interested if we can give Deep Seek one more to be like make it more smooth of a planet. So. We've given uh, both models the same, basically the same prompt of like, really make sure you're doing those features we asked for. All right, DeepSeek has finished. ChatGPT is still thinking, just as a note, mm. that O1 is still thinking, which is great because it means it's really working through a difficult problem. Yes. Uh, I broke again. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it seems to have yeah. made the same problem again where it's yeah. like dropping stuff. I'm gonna see if it can uh, output the full version right now. All right, so it really looks like DeepSeek is able to do basically two turns. It, it operates about twice as fast mm -hmm. as O1 because they're both wrapping up here at the same time. Okay. Oh. Okay. Look at that. It's a little weird that the mountain peaks get darker coloring. I think we're seeing a distinct atmosphere line on the edge of that circle. Yes. I think it is creating an atmosphere that's just really, really closely above the water. Yep. I agree. This is I mean, pretty this impressive. Is, this is pretty I mean, impressive. Yeah, yeah. It's not bad. All right, cool. let's see what uh, O1 threw at us. Oh, oh okay. baby. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I mean this this looks way more like a planet. Yeah. I mean, we still have some it's still of these buggy with the water. I mean, it's not the water, it's the clouds, right? Oh, I see, yeah. No. So these are supposed to be the clouds, but again, it's trying to do the clouds and yeah, Deep Seek okay. is not even attempting. I mean, we we are starting to split hairs a little bit, right? Yeah. Like, these are both really impressive yeah, outputs. I also don't see biomes on the right. Like it really was mm -hmm. dropping a lot of the features we asked for. Yeah. So, in terms of really being able to like follow the prompt and keep the features correct. Like yeah. I'm definitely giving this to O one. Yeah. But yeah. in 
But given the fact that DeepSeek ran at twice the pace, right? Yeah. With DeepSeek, you might need to be a little bit more careful of like saying, hey, it needs to be a full file or consider this so it doesn't drop out of the prompt or context. So, um, Reminded of the goal. So the next thing we wanted to take a look at is uh, business reasonings. How are these models actually going to be used in practice? How are they actually going to provide economic value? So we've tried to do this in the past to varying degrees of success. So we created a, a new test to put the models through today. And we're treating the models as a consultant that's going to come into a business and make some recommendations. We've created some example data for our fake company called Turing Labs, which is a fictional AI company. And the problem that they're having their AI consultants come in to try to solve is like, when should we invest in new GPUs? What should we be buying? And we've given it some mocked internal data for how the company is going and what they're spending money on and how many GPUs they have. And then some external data, again, mocked for like, what are the trends in the industry and when should we expect new GPUs on the market and what will the differences be? And so we want to see how the models can process through all that information provide recommendations, and we're also asking them to generate Python that will create charts, so hopefully there'll be a, a, a visual here that we can judge as well. We'll send off the models. There's a table. Looks scarily like ChatGPT, though. Yep. Let's see how the conclusions compare. Uh, they still fall short of giving specific recommendations other than, like, you should buy these things, and then you should upgrade. Yeah, they both I mean, include hybrid. I gotta give this to O1 here. That's that's actually an analysis. Yeah, it's bringing up like the constraints that we had in the in the data set. It's considered power. Yep. It's not really talking on this. I mean, I would love to be able to show you the charts. We ran the charts that they had generated, pulled them out, pulled out the conclusions, and so maybe we can better get a visual now for the difference in the types of reasoning that they did. Ones on the left are, are projections, right? Yeah. They're about like what would happen. Yeah. Whereas our ones are restating stuff from the, yeah. the context, right? Yeah. O one is doing reasoning to, to take information from the context and then say either we'll do a, a more detailed cost comparison that requires calculating some values or we'll actually be doing a projection for yeah. how much things are going to cost. In this case, they're comparing on-prem and cloud. Yeah. And then in this case, R1 is really just regurgitating stuff from the, from the context as graphs, which is something that the models are trained to do and specifically trained to do for the 4.0 series of models. Mm -hmm. And one of the early sort of extra model features in ChatGPT was the analysis mode, and it was mostly intended for use in generation of charts and other graphics based on yeah. data. Yeah. We, we've said it a few times in this video, but this idea that uh, R1 is a benchmark tuned model that is mostly trained on a bunch of 4.0 outputs is really mm -hmm. starting to look um, real. And I think what Chris said when, when we were still looking at the text walls of like, I would trust uh, oh, one to run my business way yeah. more, especially when we get down to that conclusion, right? About yeah. like um, actually providing the reasoning for some of its recommendations, even if they aren't as specific as we wanted, yeah. I think is way more impressive than mostly regurgitating context and then printing out a timeline, a very yeah. wishy-washy timeline, right? Basically the same thing it stated. So maybe we should move on to agentic reasoning and yes. then kind of see... That will probably give us the last piece to kind of give a definitive conclusion. But yep. you're starting to see the kind of where we're leading to towards this. But let's give it one last shot with agentic reasoning. We're all set up for our next test, which, as yeah. Dylan mentioned before, is to test like agentic reasoning, basically how well these models will be able to deal with a, a specific goal and then being able to take a bunch of steps to achieve that goal given yeah. world rules. And so this is a very simple test on screen as an example. It's called the Tower of London. It's given to children to test their planning ability and executive function ability. And the rules are simple. You start with a configuration like what's on screen. You have a goal configuration. Let's say the goal is to reverse the green and the red. And then you can only move one at a time. And obviously, you can't move um, a bead at the bottom of a peg until the bead above it has been moved to clear the spot. The training data should contain the rules of the test. That being said, we're giving the rules in the prompt as well to give it the best chance of success. This specific instance of the test probably isn't in training data, and yeah. if the models do well with this, we'll move to more and more pegs and more and more um, beads, and those instances definitely are not in the training data. So it's yeah. testing its ability to reason through a novel problem, essentially. And you can check out other videos. We've done this quite a few times. We saw that with uh, non-reasoning models, they didn't have any shot of getting through. And as we started to get reasoners, they actually started to be able to solve this like pretty well. For looking at reasoning in DeepSeek, it's maybe been like a minute or so, and it's just continuously printing out. And it's been saying, oh, this problem is impossible. It's trying all these configurations. 
I mean, we'll see the final answer. I don't know. Yeah. It's hard to tell if it's getting confused or not. Let's see. We're trying to get to that goal state. This is the starting configuration. The first move is red from B to C. B to C. <laughs> then green from B to A. It's looking good. Blue. Ooh, oh, it's already screwed no, up. No, no, no. So this is a very common, this is pretty much exactly what happened to Claude. Yeah. It seemed yeah. like it was grokking the problem, sort of, and then it broke the world rules, yeah. right? And yeah. even with all that thinking and trying all these different ways, it never could realize, oh, I can't move the blue thing until the red thing is moved because there's something sitting on top of it. Yeah. So now let's, you know, go over to O1 and we can show what it came up with. So its step-by-step -step solution is to move red from B to C. B to C. C oh, B to C. Yeah. <laughs> then uh, move green from B to A. Then move red from C yeah. to B. Yep. And then move blue from C on top of A. Green bottom, blue top. And if you yep. scroll up. And if we zoom out a little bit, you can see yeah, that it matches goal that goal state. Yeah. So, so this, is, this is where R1 got stuck after, I think, two moves on a pretty simple instance of this mm -hmm. problem that even could be in the training data. Yeah. Check out our O1 Pro video to see us go even further into yeah. a really novel Tower of London problem. And but it does I, exponentially harder. Yes. So the fact that it fails at this means it has no chance of the next ones. Like, three pigs are very easy. Like, like we said, it's for children. So we expect models that are intelligent should be able to do this. So the fact that DeepSeek fails here does kind of lend to what we've been seeing of it, it's just not as intelligent as O1 in terms of real reasoning, um, however you want to fight it. And just to be clear, like to, to go back, if you go back to some of our old videos, we were very disappointed with the O1 preview release. Yeah. And, it, and it's primarily, at least for me, it was primarily because this Tower of London test, to me, is like, can you reason through a novel problem and respect some rules? Yeah. And that was the promise of reasoners. And so when we didn't see that, even in a really simple, seemingly stupid test case, yeah. I was really worried about O1's ability to actually reason as opposed to seem like it's reasoning and do well on some benchmarks. Yeah. And so when I saw the Tower of London get almost solved by yeah. O1 Full and even more solved by O1 Pro, um, that was very encouraging. Yeah. to the promise of reasoners and to the to the new OpenAI reasoning models actually living up to that promise and actually making a change in what we can do as engineers in yeah. terms of building products that are useful to people. Yeah. And I'm not seeing that with DeepSeek. No. It seems to me like they did the reasoning thing because it's hot and because maybe it helped them on some of these benchmarks, but like in terms of truly novel problems, the, the times when you really need reasoners, I, I'm just not seeing it. And so maybe it's a step above, like, you know, non-reasoners like 4.0, but doesn't seem to be in the same class of the real 01, 03 class of reasoners. So time will tell, as you said, this could be their first release. Like, maybe they release R2, and mm -hmm. it, like, fixes a lot of these problems. But so far, it seems to drop a lot of context, not really reason correctly, or not have the ability to keep a lot of context, which is kind of mandatory for reasoning. And in general, just doesn't seem to be... Uh, innovating as much or generalizing as much. Mm -hmm. um, so time will tell. Just to, to sort of prove this point, because some people might say, oh, well, DeepSeek's not really reasoning or it's not beating 01, but but it's a, it's a smaller it's model, model, right? And we don't know the true size of a one mini mm. but just judging on inference time a one mini and deep seek are definitely in the same Equal. order of magnitude at least a parameter count yeah. and so we we ran the same prompt just now on a one mini and like we can run through it really quick red from b to c green from b to a red from c to b and then bringing it home with blue from c to a so yeah. one mini did this yeah. no problem yeah. right yeah and it was very fast it thought for like 10 seconds and actually understood everything so it was like an order of magnitude quicker actually yeah. in responding because deep seek really tried to think about it for a long time like two minutes it seemed to be doing more like exhaustive search so anyways conclusion holds uh deep seek impressive but not quite there yet mm. uh it's mm. not killing anyone as far as i'm concerned yeah. but awesome that it's open source and that yeah. uh that People can learn from each other. People can use these models offline. We'll test more of these models as uh, both DeepSeek and OpenAI are pushing the boundaries forward. And of course, we'll be testing their competitors as well. Uh, as always, let us know if there's anything else you want to see tested on the channel. Comment and subscribe, like the video if you enjoyed. It really helps the channel grow. And uh, with that, see you next time. Bye-bye.